So we looked at recursive procedures right? and we talked about inductive definitions where we have a base case and an inductive case. But one of the important rec recursive procedures which we have described informally and which we should like now look at is a way to systematically explore a graph and this is called depth first search. So suppose we start at a node i in a graph and we want to know what are the nodes or vertices that are reachable from node i. So the obvious thing to do is to start exploring the neighbors of i. So there are two ways to do, do this. We can explore all the neighbors, then the neighbors of the neighbors and so on and this is called breadth first search. I find all the vertices which are reachable in one step from i, then all that are reachable in two steps from i, all that are reachable in three steps from i and so on. Right? So this is breadth first search and this will eventually find all the vertices. Another way which is very interesting is depth first search which is I say okay pick any neighbor of i, now go to that neighbor and continue exploring from that neighbor. Do not come back and look at the next neighbor of i until we have explored the first neighbor j. So we start from i, visit a neighbor j, then we recursively explore j. Now why will this recursion stop? That is because we have already visited i. So when we explore j, we have to tell j not to visit i again. So we have one fewer node to visit. We keep doing this until we cannot visit anything else. Now we come back to i right, and see whether it still has any unexplored neighbors and continue. Right? So this procedure called depth first search right, is best described recursively. So we will see a recursive implementation and we will see how it works. So in order to make the recursion work, we have to make sure that when we explore the neighbor of i, that we do not come back and start exploring i again. So we have to say that i is already being explored, it has already been visited. Right? So we have to maintain some extra information about which nodes have been visited and keep incrementing this. And once a node, node is visited, it will not be re-explored. So this is why the computation keeps reducing in size in terms of the argument. So depth first search will keep calling itself with a smaller set of nodes to reduce, to explore and eventually when there are no nodes left to explore, depth first search will return without doing anything. So we keep this information in a dictionary, right? So visited will be a dictionary and each key will represent a visited node, a node for which we have already been there before, right? So we initialize it to be the empty dictionary, right? And we will now have this procedure which will take as input of course the graph, this is the matrix describing the edges in the graph. It will take the current state of visited vertices. So current dictionary telling us which vertices have been visited so far, right? And then which is the node from where we are exploring. So i is the new node which we are going to explore. And after exploring i, the set of visited vertices is going to be updated by i of course and everything that I reach from i. So that will come back, so I will update my visited vertices by taking the, the whatever dictionary I get back from this depth first search and updating it, right? So in this process, after I have executed depth first search and updated visited by reassigning it like this, then the keys of this visited matrix, if I started with an empty dictionary, will be precisely those vertices which I can reach starting from i. Right? So assuming that I start with the empty thing and then I call this right at the beginning. So i is the first vertex I explore. Then when I started, I will explore nothing. And then after I have gone through this, what I would like is that DFS returns all the vertices that were visited in the process of exploring the neighbors of i. Right? And in particular, of course, if this tells us which all things are reachable. Right? So here is the procedure, it is very simple. Right? So we assume that we get an incoming matrix called visited and the reason that we are uh, exploring i is because i has not been visited so far. So the first thing we do is that we add an entry for i, right? So we say that visited of i is true, right? So if visited i were already true, we should not be here, right? That's an assumption. The assumption is we will not call DFS for a node which is already visited. So when I come into DFS with a node that I'm trying to explore, the first thing to do is to mark it as visited. Now I need to check all the neighbors of i. So I go through every column in my graph matrix, right? Check if there is an edge from i to j. And if there is an edge from i to j and I have not visited that neighbor before, 
okay, so j is not a key in the visited matrix, then I will suspend my exploration of i and I will visit j instead, right, so I will do a DFS from j and at the end of the DFS from j, I will get back a bunch of nodes which are visited through j, so I will update the visited matrix to be that matrix. Now notice that I passed it with visited i to be true, so it will come back with visited i to be true because I already set it to be true, but a whole bunch of other things into j and all that will be thing. And finally, when I have finished processing all the neighbors of i, I will return the visited matrix that i have computed, I mean the vertex i has computed, right. Notice in particular that if all these neighbors of i, right, if every ij which is set to 1 actually is already a key, then this will do nothing at i, it will do nothing except mark i, right, it will set visited of i to be true, then this whole thing will just do nothing because for every vertex that could possibly go through from i, you have already seen it before, so you will just update visited with one more entry saying visited i is true and then come back. Right, so that is the extreme case which happens when everything has been visited in the neighborhood of i. So let us understand how this works by looking at an example, right. So the first thing to note is that if I start with the visited matrix to be a visited uh, dictionary to be empty and then I explore from i and it comes back with every vertex visited, that means that the graph is connected, that is starting from i, I can reach every vertex in the graph. And if I do not get back all the vertices, that means the graph is disconnected because there are some vertices that I cannot reach from i and therefore those fall into a different group of vertices which are not connected to the group which is connected to i. So let us look at this example. So I want to start DFS and find out what all I can reach from vertex 4, right. So I start with this empty dictionary visited, nothing has been visited so far and I call DFS with this vertex. So the first thing that happens is that visited 4 gets set to be true, right, and then I have to look at the neighbors of 4. So the neighbors of 4 are 1, 5 and 8, right. So let us, let us assume that we always explore the neighbors in kind of increasing order. Remember we are going through the columns from 0 to n minus, so here is actually 1 to n, but it does not matter. So we are going through the columns from smallest to largest, so I will choose to visit 1, right. So I set visited of 4 to be true and I choose to visit 1. So now I go into a recursive call, I have suspended the call for 4 and I have gone into a call exploring the neighbors of 1. So the first thing that happens is that I have to set that 1 is visited, right, and then I have to look at the neighbors of 1 which are 1, 2, 3, I mean 2, 3 and 4. If I go in order then the first thing I pick up is 2, so when I go into 1 I will set 1 to true and I will now start exploring Okay. Once I explore 2, then I will set 2 to true and I have to now explore the neighbors of 2 which are 1, 3. When I explore the neighbors of 2, the first neighbor is 1, but 1 is already visited, right, so I will skip 1. The next neighbor is 3, 3 is not visited, so I will call 3, right. So now I go to 3, so now I am at 3. So having entered DFS of 3, I set 3 to be true saying is visited, right, and now I have to look at its neighbors which are 1 and 2, but now 1 and 2 are both visited already, so I cannot do anything from 3, so the DFS call for 3 returns with no change except for setting 3 to be true, right, and now what happens is that this returns back to the DFS call for 2, okay, now 2 has no change left because the next vertex that I have to explore from 2 is 4 which is already visited, so 2 will return to 1. And now if the call for 1 has no vertices to explore because I have already explored 2, right, I went from 1 to 2, but now if I look at 3, 3 was visited via 2, 4 was visited because 4 was the one it called 1 to begin with, so 4 will come back, so I will come back to 4, right. So after calling 3, okay, I will come back to 4 again and now remember that 4 had these neighbors. So it will pick the next neighbor of 4 which is not visited which is 5, right. So I will now go from here to 5. So when I call 5, then 5 becomes true and now 5 has neighbors 6, 4, 5, 4, 6, uh, sorry, 4, 6 and 7. So since 4 is already visited, it will call 6, okay. So I will set 6 to true, then I will go to 6 and I will look at its neighbors 7 and 8, right. 
so it will call 7, so 7 to true. Now when I come to 7, it has neighbors 5 and 6, but both 5 and 6 have already been done, so there is nothing further to do with 7, so I come back to 6 and then I go from 6 and I go to its next neighbor 8, right, and then 8, eight will visit 9, right, and 9 will visit 10. Now at this point everything is marked, right, everything is marked as visited. So when I look at the neighbors of 10, there is only 9 which is already visited, so I will come back to 9. Right? When I look at 9, it has no more unvisited neighbors, 6, 8 and 10 are all visited, so we will come back to 8. 8 has no more neighbors to visit, 4, 6 and 9 are all visited, it will come back and so on. So eventually I will come back to 4, right? and now remember I had done 4 to 1, okay? and then I had done 4 to 5. So in principle now I can go from 4 to 8, but 4 will find that 8 has already been visited. So it will say, okay, now I skip 8 and then I finish. Right? So the DFS call to 4 will finally come back with this list of visited vertices and since this list has every key in some added in some some random order 4, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10 and there should have been a 7 somewhere which I seem to have lost. Okay? So since this thing has all the keys, it you can actually verify by looking at this picture of course manually that you can reach every vertex from 4. Right? So depth first search is a recursive procedure. I mean, it's not necessarily recursive, but it's easiest to describe it recursively. It's a systematic way to explore a graph by recursively visiting all the unexplored neighbors and keeping track of the visited vertices. In our case, we used a dictionary, right? So we added each node that we visited to this dictionary and we kept updating this dictionary and returning the updated dictionary from depth first search so that after each call to depth first search, we have the updated status of which nodes have been visited through the recursive call, right? And one, one example, one simple example we saw is that once we get back the list of visited vertices through the initial call, we know whether or not the graph is connected, right? If every key, every vertex is present as a key, it's connected. There are lots of other interesting things that you can do with depth first search, which you will find out in other courses and later on. It's not necessary to do it now. But for us, depth first search is basically a way of finding out what all is connected to a given vertex.